hello everybody now uh, today uh, in this particular uh, sub module i'll try to discuss the different simulation and some numerical problem associated with the basic manufacturing processes so let us start with this particular numerical problem uh, which is related to the metal forming process so here we see that we can say that a round billet okay of uh, 150 millimeter length and 75 millimeter diameter it is actually extruded using the direct extrusion process so considering the ideal deformation that means basically there is no friction we are assuming and no redundant work is associated with the ideal friction uh, ideal deformation condition the extrusion ratio is measured at 5 and the average flow stress value is given as 350 mega pascal and then you have to calculate what is the pressure on the ram we can we can calculate in in this extrusion process we just simply apply the these laws um, what we understand uh, from the deformation process here so we see the length of the billet billet means is basically one particular shape of this component and the length of the billet is 150 millimeter and uh, diameter of the billet so it's a basically a cylindrical shape 75 millimeter so therefore we see that extrusion ratio the ratio between ai and af so initial part so initially uh, it was uh, this uh, the ai is the initial cross section and maybe it is converted to the the final cross section is af so the r is defined ai by af which is uh, here it is defined the extrusion ratio so ai by af so definitely ai cross initial cross section is more than the final cross section so the ratio is equal to 5 Close stress during the different so during this continuous deformation process we maintain one constant stress value that is flow stress value 350 mega pascal now we have to calculate what is the pressure on the ram so before that we need to calculate what is the basically load per unit area is required just to maintain the deformation of the this component so basically we can calculate what is the in this case what is the the work done uh, in, in this case so see that work done is basically the first you can calculate the strain strain ai by af so basically we say the strain is basically calculated ln final f by li the size but here we see that ai li the initial volume af lf that is the volume conservation we maintain during the deformation process so definitely ai by af equal to lf by li we put it uh, lf by li because that with that values we don't know we put it here then we are getting the logarithm of that and that is equivalent to uh, this uh, ai by af and 2 ln because ai is proportional to the the diameter square di square so that is the di by df the whole square 2 i ln di by df so we can calculate the strain value and we understand what is the pressure with the uniform pressure so total load here the work done is basically the stress into strain value we can calculate and which is strain uh, this is and this is the stress value which is uh, 350 stress and the uniform stress and the strain ln r this ratio di by df or ai by af we know this one they directly put it and you can get this is the 563 mega pascal so work done per unit volume is basically uh, we calculate this is equivalent to in si unit uh, joule per meter cube so that means it is equivalent to joule which is newton meter per meter cube so basically newton per meter square so that we can we can easily calculate newton per meter square and that is equivalent to the pressure on the ram we can easily calculate uh, using this uh, deformation uh, this process so this is one example and we understand this application of the uh, this in the we can simple calculation we can find out in case of the extrusion process now try to look into some simulation to understand the process in the better way so uh, first in that why we should use the simulation in the manufacturing process so basically through the simulation we can do the optimization of the process parameters is possible because this the there might be the wide range of the process parameter which is associated with the any kind of the manufacturing process and probably one particular range the produces the best result one particular uh, set or combination of the set can produce the uh, best result so in that sense we need to do the optimization of the 
exact parameter which is produce the very good result. So, for this purposes we need to do some kind of the simulation of the process and it is also help simulation of the process I am talking about the computer simulation and it also helps to reduce the experimental cost and therefore and it also helps to design the actual process because some cases we cannot measure each and every uh, uh, aspect associated with the manufacturing process through measurement through experiment is sometimes difficult. So, we can take the help of a computer simulation to understand the process in the better way. So, that is why it helps to design the process. So, here there is a need to do some kind of the to understand the simulation of the manufacturing process. But this computer simulation involved uh, in this way first we need to create the geometric modeling means we have to define that particular geometry through which we want to do some uh, we will be able to solve the uh, equation in this particular domain we are interested we are looking for the different distribution of the different parameters or distribution of the different stress temperature. So, for that purpose we need to define the geometry first. Then once we decide the geometry then we discrete the basic basically computer simulation of complex manufacturing process it is not always easy to get uh, the this analytical solution. So, most of the cases we do not get the analytical solution. So, until and unless very specific assumptions we can do. So, therefore, computer simulation of the manufacturing process mainly rely on the some kind of the numerical techniques we usually follow. So, most of the numerical techniques we follow it is a finite element disk, finite element, finite volume or finite difference method there you need to discretize the geometry. So, that is why that is called the meshing. So, basically we do the meshing. So, we create so many of uh, node points, uh, nodal points associated with the geometry and then we define the physics definition means basically what kind of the uh, analysis we are looking for say if are you looking for the temperature analysis or stress analysis based on that we can define the constitutive relation or governing equations along with the boundary interaction of this particular manufacturing process all we represent in the mathematical form uh, just to physically define the problem. Now, once we do this, so now we try to solve this governing equation along with the boundary conditions in the solution domain. Solution domain is basically what geometry we have created on that domain we try to solve it. Now, once we solve we will get the output and then we can do the post processing of the output for example, few cases this, uh, this uh, certain uh, that the which are looking for say for example, heat, heat transfer analysis temperature is the direct output from this the simulation. But in case of stress analysis, stress analysis is not the direct output from the simulation rather direct output is the simulation is the this uh, distortion or deformation via displacement field basically in stress analysis. Now, once we get the displacement field then we can correlate with the displacement in the strain field and from the strain field we can correlate with the stress field. So, this is the usual approach in case of the stress analysis. So, in that cases we need to do some kind of the post processing operations of the results to represent the result what we are user is basically looking for. So, these are the very basic steps once we establish any kind of the simulation computer simulation technique for uh, any kind of the manufacturing process. Now, before doing that we need to look into this thing for example, the physical steps for evaluation of the temperature field I looking for the arc based directed energy deposition process. So, in one particular manufacturing process in this case definitely when you looking into uh, this DD process first of the we need to apply some kind of the heat then you need to go for the solution of the heat transfer equation or heat conduction equation. So, to get, get the temperature field. So, with this the based on the Fourier heat conduction model we, we can look into this is the governing equation. So, where the both spatial and temporal, temporal distribution of the temperature is possible from the governing equation, but of course, not only governing equation we need to define the boundary interaction also. So, boundary interaction we can see that uh, initial temperature uh, we can define and uh, natural or Newman boundary conditions we can define and uh, uh, other cases uh, this type of boundary condition sometimes we apply the boundary condition in, uh, I think uh, natural boundary conditions okay, so in, in terms of the heat flux and this thing that radiation heat loss and uh, heat loss by convection from the surface which is equivalent to the the at the surface what is the heat conducted to the surface that should be equal uh, that typical boundary condition if we put in this particular manufacturing process. Then along with the we, we define that heat transfer there is a that uh, the other parameters also need to define sometimes for example, the heat transfer coefficient need to define. So, heat transfer coefficient 
can be 800 watt per meter square per Kelvin uh, for the bottom surface of the substrate, uh, sorry, the convective heat transfer and, uh, and in, in general other cases it can be the 5.7 watt per meter square per Kelvin. It means that the depending upon the problem, the bottom surface usually heat transfer coefficient is much more just, just to incorporate the effect of the, the contact resistance uh, between the, the, the plate and along with the external uh, plate we just interacting uh, at this point. Similarly, when there is a natural um, convection is there we put the heat transfer coefficient is the or a, a heat transfer coefficient of the air at the room temperature that we put it, it usually 5.7. I mean to say that that depending upon the problem we can we have we can modulate the values of the heat transfer coefficient uh, depending upon the problem nature of the problem. So, once we do all these things uh, then uh, in this case we go for the heat transfer analysis. Now, when you try to look in the stress analysis, so we want we are interested to estimate what is the residual stress for the arc based DED process. So, in that case is definitely we have to do the static uh, quasi static uh, incremental analysis we usually follow based on the Lagrangian frame. So, of course, the mechanical analysis is nonlinear analysis. Uh, in this case we see the this uh, uh, gradient of the stress plus the this thus force body force uh, that is definitely uh, this will be the uh, per unit volume that should be balanced. So, it is basically static equilibrium equation we can use it and we, we will get uh, this is the static equilibrium equation and then we are getting the equilibrium in terms of the internal stress of the of the domain. Now, this internal stress, but when there is a application of the load, load can be in the any kind of the mechanical load, it can be a thermal load to the system for the stress analysis, but in this case the is the load in the terms of the thermal analysis, the thermal load basically. So, basically temperature differences at the different point, they induce the strain and that strain is basically responsible for the dist, uh, generation of the residual stress, but the strain distribution is basically non-uniform. So, the non-uniform uh, over the space, so that is why it creates the uh, stressed the plastic deformation within the domain and of course, when the plastic deformation along with the elastic recovery, they create some kind of the permanent stress within the body and that can be represented in the form of a residual stress. So, that is why we can estimate the residual stress uh, from the this uh, stress analysis model, but most of the cases we use the thermal elastic plastic model that means the the mechanical behavior is the elastoplastic behavior we represent the material uh, material as a behaves like a elastoplastic material, but load is incorporated in the system in the in the form of a thermal load. So, that is what is called the thermo elastoplastic model and here the material deformation in the plastic zone and elastic recovery both are there. So, therefore, we can use the when the elastic recovery is there we use the we follow the this st stress versus strain relation the using the Hooke's law. So, basically it is a linear relation between the stress and strain within the elastic limit that we, we utilize. But when you try to look in the plastic deformation state uh, in, in this calculation then we use the total incremental strain in the form of a different component of the strain component. So, usually the stress analysis is done in the incremental form. So, in this case total strain can be have the different component of the strain which is can contribute for the generation of the residual stress. One can be the uh, elastic stress, elastic strain thermal strain, uh, plastic strain and maybe the, the strain which is associated to the phase transformation. So, that means that kind of the strain component we can incorporate individually, we can incorporate, uh, in, we can calculate individually also and then we take the inputs of the strain components that is the consist of the total uh, strain uh, during the analysis. Now, in that cases we increment of the stress, maybe the developed from the elastic strain we can calculate the incremental of the stress in terms of the by calculating the what is the amount of the elastic strain. Uh, similarly, elastic stress uh, uh, I calculated from the modulus uh, okay, uh, this is the expression for the modulus of elasticity in Poisson ratio in terms of the this parameter we can estimate what is the, the, the D matrix, this is the basically related to the properties of the matrix uh, the material property. So, material property the stress analysis in the elastic analysis is usually Young's modulus and the Poisson ratio. So, we can incorporate in this way and finally, we try to look into what is the thermal strain we represent the thermal strain in terms of the uh, temperature difference and the coefficient of the thermal expansion. 
So, all these parameters are actually required to define uh, when you try to do some kind of the stress analysis associated with the, this problem. So, we see the thermal analysis we follow certain governing equation, but when you do the stress analysis we try to use the constitutive relation uh, between the displacement to the strain and strain to the stress and it can be different, it can be linear in case of the elastic stress part, uh, but it will be definitely non-linear in case of the plastic, uh, plastic component. But usual approach is the incremental approach, we can divide, we can count the total strain and then we can total strain which is consist of the several components which is the thermal strain, elastic strain, plastic strain and the strain associated with any kind of the phase transformation. So, therefore, all can incorporate the total strain and then that is why we, we just stress increment we can uh, calculate the or the elastic plastic part uh, individually we can calculate and based on that we estimate what is the total uh, the stress generated and the and this particular model following certain kind of the hardening role hardening rule following the specific stress versus strain behavior of a particular material so these are the typical stress analysis and now once you do all these things, the thermal st stress and strain analysis, then we can estimate that uh, we, we can see the how after solving the equation, what we can represent the different manufacturing process. I will start with this thing casting process. So, how the casting process, we can take the representative uh, domain, the solution domain. We see this is the representative sol solution domain in a casting process. I say this is the representative domain uh, which is surrounded by the sand mold and you see uh, the solidification occurs that means from liquid casting process basically we put the liquid metal and from liquid metal to the solid metal it transform. So, two transformation on that, so it is gradually solidify and of course, one solid, uh, solid liquid interface is moves one particular direction and, and then and other part keep on uh, solidifying and uh, solid liquid interface is moves in one this direction. So, that domain if you see the domain solidified one particular instant if you look this is the solidified part, this is the liquid part and there is a is a separated by the solid liquid interface and this is the there is a transition in the solid liquid interface of the temperature from liquid phase to uh, solid phase there is a gradual transition not sharp transition of this uh, in, in this case. So, we can see the simulation how we can represent this the casting process you see that gradually start solidifying from the corner the surrounding wall and it is moving towards the, the center point uh, and gradually and see at the end point it moves very fast and now it is completely solidified. So, it starts with the wall surrounding where the solidification starts. So, this basically we are solving the heat conduction equation here after solving the heat conduction equation gradually transform the uh, losing the heat from the outside uh, the, uh, through the, the losing heat through the boundary. And then when the losing heat through the boundary then gradually the liquid metal is transformed to the, the, sol uh, the, the solid form and that solid liquid interface it moves uh, one particular uh, if you see it moves one particular direction. So, this is typical transformation of the liquid phase to solid phase and we can observe this kind of the solidification behavior or the I say that temperature distribution associated with the, the casting process. Similarly, you can see the continuous casting process also, we see the continuous casting process means that the liquid metal enters from one side and within that uh, this particular length the liquid metal is converted to the solid and the other part the outlet there is a solid component solidified metal will come out uh, from the outlet. So, this is the continuous casting process. Now, at the wall the, the in this case the we will try to uh, get the heat loss from the boundary such that we put the high conductive material uh, uh, at the boundary and of course, we put some cooling system such that it quickly lose the hot, uh, lose the heat and then after losing the heat will do it from liquid phase is converted to the uh, solid phase. So, this way it works in the continuous casting process. So, here you can see this continuous casting process and the liquid fraction and solid fraction we can calculate the remaining liquid and see why it is uh, near to the at the outlet there is a uh, there is a that is a uh, try to solidifying this thing that try to solidifying here and the uh, outlet. So, if you take little more the length of this component then complete solidification will happen uh, before exiting for the this uh, uh, over this length. So, here this continuous casting process. So, we see this is the this the from boundary it is a heat loss from the boundary by by convection radiation, but we can accelerate the heat transfer rate also by using the high conductive material usually the copper material you can put in the boundary. So, that 
quickly heat can be dissipated uh, uh, from the uh, from the boundary and then it will solidify before uh, when it exit here so it completely solidify so this is the casting process so we we can we can represent we can explain all this phenomena just by solving the heat conduction equation in the casting process continuous casting process similarly we can look at the simulation and additive manufacturing process we can see the how it works in the additive manufacturing process so this is the base plate so base plate over the base plate we can see that material can be deposited so gradually the material is deposited and making the certain width and thickness of this uh, of the layer strip length it can it produce and the one layer is depositing the next layer is also depositing so in this case a simulation is performed similarly we are representing here the heat transfer analysis so basically we are basically we are observing here the temperature distribution but see gradually it's a activating uh, one that means in the in front of that activating the the site element and the uh, with the adding of the uh, material so it is activating on, on this element and this is the typical phenomenon is associated with the additive manufacturing process so the same thing we can represent through the simulation but this simulation is basically we are doing for heat transfer analysis and uh, the one interface uh, thing we are assuming the simply adding the layer adding the uh, elements uh, during the uh, the deposition of the material so this way you see that it is gradually creating the vertical wall so that we observe in experimentally also in additive manufacturing process the similar kind of the phenomena you can observe through the uh, simulation process you can see the very big wall gradually it is uh, uh, depositing this thing we can make a vertical wall by depositing layer by layer one layer is depositing over that uh, we are depositing another layer so this layer it can come from the powder also so directly we are injecting the powder which is directed energy deposition process or uh, this can be uh, something that we are we are melting the wire and the depositing on the surface then we can make the this vertical wall which is associated with the uh, additive manufacturing process so this particular additive manufacturing is the directed energy deposition process we can see that how the the vertical wall uh, we can we can create in the in the additive manufacturing process so here suppose we want to make a uh, deposition of this process we see the temperature distribution also we, we can make a fill by following the additive manufacturing process so so here we are depositing one layer and we fill the layer and we decide the path so along the this path we have designed the path and we can gradually uh, moving this along this path and we can see that how the temperature distribution uh, is going gradually filling the material this is the uh, one is the numerical modeling of the laser additive manufacturing process so it means we are using the powder uh, powder actually just fill the um, this uh, this cavity uh, fill the this path so so here i am trying to explain this that over a uh, flat slab the rect rectangular component we can create just following the additive manufacturing process and uh, how it can be done you just follow you are just following this thing where the deposition has been going on uh, gradually so we layer first we fill the one layer complete uh, plate and then we go for the second now it is going we are moving for the um, this third layer so this way we can we can accelerate we can we can design the process what we can deposit the material and see uh, there are um, way we ways we can we can deposit the uh, material in the additive manufacturing process just to make a plate so it will be very the what is the thickness and width it will be controlled by the what is the metal transfer uh, during the process and in that way you can control the metal transfer in this process or so basically we are doing the heat transfer analysis but every time every time step we are changing the domain basically we are keep on adding the the domain with this uh, this analysis so that is the main difference from the other welding this thing. the domain is not fixed here we are keep on adding the domain uh, along with the application of, with the with the deposition of the material so that truly you are representing the actual phenomena through the numerical simulation also here and if you see this color bar indicating the actually color bar indicates the temperature distribution of the this uh, laser additive manufacturing process now if you look in this is the simulation is basically associated with the fusion oiling process so fusion oiling process only heat transfer analysis so initial the transient state uh, initially the transient state uh, gradually the 
see if you see there is a arc is moving we are putting the arc so it will getting the temperature distribution the affected by the temperature we see the temperature distribution it is moving one particular direction the when arc is moving so that is shifting of the temperature because when arc is moving it is melting and gradually it is solidifying in the back side so that's why the particular way that it is moving the uh, temperature so initial phase is the transient state then after that it is the quasi steady state phase associated with the fission welding process so here we are joining the two metal so at the interface of the two metal we are applying the applying the heat flux and then the heat flux is gradually moving on particular direction along the welding direction so and after all these things similar from the simulation you are getting the output of the temperature distribution associated with the fusion welding process okay. now we try to look into this thing something is associated with the simulation of the friction stress welding process you see the friction stress welding process the tool is moving and uh, tool is moving and then two materials are joined together but it is a solid state welding process so it is a mixing and the material if you see the top there is a the, some flash formation is there and we see observe in the friction sterling process when it is the uh, two components are joined together so because of the plunge depth some flash uh, formation is there associated with the friction and the, that flash formation can be represented using the simulation techniques also we see how it works so tool is rotating and then gradually one uh, keep on rotating one particular phase then it is moving the tool rotating tool is moving a uh, particular direction and when it is moving it will create the some the flash um, during the fsw process similarly here you can observe that friction stress welding process simulation is a solid state welding process we can see that joining process we see it's a tool is rotating one particular point and that this hole indicates there is a tool pin and it is moving one direction and gradually the hole is moving but it is filling up due to the mixing of the material and once you see that uh, when it is ended then we see there is a hole also at the end in part and that is observed in case of the friction stress welding process and because of the tool pin but we are showing here the temperature analysis and this is for the material is the basically aluminum alloy 6061 aluminum alloy we see tool is rotating uh, and this rotation rotation of the tool is helped through mixing of the material and we are simply solving the heat conduction equation over the domain and we are getting the temperature distribution but the the features of the surface deformation surface features uh, we, in that cases we, we can use the couple euler and lagrangian method to understand the the shape of the surface uh, surface profile so that's why surface profile we are getting the sur particular surface profile along with that we are getting the temperature distribution of fsw process similarly see the another simulation of the fsw process also we are here you can see the tool is rotating and then gradually you see there is a uh, uh, moving on particular direction but probably the second case the process parameter is not proper so therefore it creates kind of the failed join failed join means if you see there is a gap between the two plate so it is not completely mixing up the material between the two plate so failed join so this kind of the behavior is also uh, we are representing through the simulation technique so in that way we can explain the the different phenomena associated with the this uh, this manufacturing process so uh, I, I i mean to say that the simulation so with the help of the simulation we can say that one particular process parameter will be able to create a very good joint or it will be able to create very bad joint also that kind of the in information is possible through the simulation of the fsw process so i think uh, that's all and uh, thank you very much uh, for your kind attention